In the legends of the Crusades, the Christian knights told tales of the terrifying swords wielded by their Saracen enemies. These blades, forged in the city of Damascus, were said to possess almost magical properties. They were so sharp, they could slice through a silk scarf as it fell through the air, yet so strong and flexible, they could cleave through a rifle barrel without chipping or breaking. These legendary swords were made from a unique metal, instantly recognizable by a beautiful watery or damask pattern on its surface. This was Damascus steel, a material so advanced that the secret to its creation was a mystery even in its own time. Then, around the 18th century, the knowledge was lost completely and the formula for true Damascus steel vanished from the world. This is the story of a lost ancient technology that modern science is only now beginning to understand. The quest to understand Damascus steel is a journey into the cutting edge of ancient materials science. The properties described in the legends seem almost contradictory. A metal is usually either hard, meaning it can hold a sharp edge, but is brittle, or it is tough, meaning it is flexible and resistant to breaking, but is too soft to hold a good edge. The genius of Damascus steel was that it was both. It was a composite material that combined the best properties of different types of steel into a single superior metal. The stakes of this mystery are about rediscovering a level of craftsmanship and scientific intuition that was lost for centuries. The secrets of Damascus steel are a testament to the ingenuity of ancient metallurgists who through centuries of trial and error created a material that we are only now able to fully appreciate with the tools of modern nanotechnology. True Damascus steel, also known as Wootz steel, originated not in Damascus, but in southern, uh, southern India, as early as 300 BC. The Indian smiths created small cakes or ingots of this high carbon steel, which were then traded across the Middle East. The master smiths of Damascus were not the inventors of the steel, but they were the unrivaled masters of forging it into the legendary blades. The forging process was a closely guarded secret, passed down from master to apprentice, and it was this process that brought out the steel's unique properties and its beautiful surface pattern. The deep, fiery glow of a blacksmith's forge, the crucible where raw earth and fire are transformed into a legendary metal. The rhythmic, ringing song of a hammer striking an anvil, each blow carefully calculated to shape the steel and align its hidden internal structure. The hiss of steam and the smell of hot metal as the finished blade is quenched. The final crucial step that locks its magical properties into place. For centuries, European smiths tried and failed to replicate Damascus steel. They knew it was a form of high carbon steel, but they couldn't reproduce its unique combination of hardness and flexibility. The secret, it turns out, was not just in the recipe, but in the microscopic structure of the metal itself. Modern scientific analysis, using powerful tools like scanning electron microscopes, has revealed the long-lost secret. Damascus steel is a type of ultra-high carbon steel, but its unique properties come from the segregation of different materials on a microscopic level during its slow cooling process. The process created layers of hard, brittle iron carbide or cementite embedded within a softer, more flexible matrix of steel. It was a metal that was intentionally engineered on a microscopic level. The cool, smooth feel of a finished Damascus blade, its surface covered 
in the mesmerizing watery patterns that are the ghost of its internal structure. The perfect, almost weightless balance of the sword in your hand. The incredible, almost supernatural sharpness of an edge that was forged centuries ago. But the most stunning discovery came in 2006. A team of German scientists examining a 17th century Damascus saber found something even more remarkable. The steel contained carbon nanotubes and cementite nanowires. This means that the ancient smiths of Damascus had, completely by accident, created a nanocomposite material. These microscopic tubes and wires are incredibly strong and are at the forefront of modern materials science. The ancient smiths had no idea they were creating nanotechnology. They were simply following a traditional recipe and a set of forging techniques that they knew produced a superior blade. The ultimate reveal of the Damascus steel story is that the secret was not just one thing, but a combination of a unique raw material and a masterful process. The original Wootz steel from India, which was crucial to the process, was made from an iron ore that contained trace amounts of other elements, like vanadium and molybdenum. These elements acted as catalysts, promoting the formation of the microscopic carbide layers and nanowires during the forging process. The tragic climax of this story is the loss of the technology. Around the year 1800, the recipe for true, true Damascus steel was lost. The reason is believed to be twofold. First, the specific Indian mines that produced the unique wood steel ore with its crucial trace elements were depleted. The raw material simply ceased to exist. Second, the oral traditions and secret forging techniques were lost as the master smiths were displaced by industrialization. The knowledge was never written to and it died with the last generation of masters. The fallout from this lost technology is a modern renaissance in bladesmithing. Today, many smiths create something called pattern welded steel, which is often sold as Damascus steel. This technique involves forging together multiple layers of different types of steel to create a beautiful watery pattern on the surface. While these knives and swords are of high quality and mimic the appearance of the original, they are not true Damascus steel and do not possess the same unique internal nanostructure. The story of Damascus steel is a humbling reminder that our ancestors were not primitive. They were brilliant scientists and engineers who through intuition and tradition mastered materials in a way that we are only now beginning to understand. It is a story of a lost art and a secret that was held in the fire, the hammer and the hands of a master. If you find stories of lost technologies and ancient scientific marvels compelling, consider following for more deep dives into the unknown.